Hi everybody and welcome back. In today's video I'm going to be working on this juniper procumbens nana. It's a very popular species where I am which is in uh, South Africa and uh, this is actually a customer's tree. The customer asked me to come and take a look at their collection of bonsai trees which had been at that point in time slightly neglected and um, they asked me to come and look at them with a the view of repotting and just getting the trees back into health again. I was quite excited for, uh, with this find and um, because it's clearly a fairly old tree it has some, uh, some maturity, some characteristics of maturity about it and uh, I think it has a tremendous amount of potential and I think that this video that I'll be doing today is just the first of uh, several parts hopefully um, today focusing on the repotting of the tree and then perhaps in future episodes just how we will be I will approach the styling of it and just as it develops over the coming years. Juniper procumbens nana is a very popular species as I mentioned where I am and I think it's very popular all around the world in fact it is probably the most, uh, certainly one of the most common, uh, commonly found molesai or uh, trees or species of trees that are used for bonsai uh, kind of mass production um, that you will get at a lot of garden centers and shopping malls uh, for sale as bonsai trees. And that is because, of course, its foliage lends itself to being quite bushy uh, relative, in a relatively short space of time. Being a juniper, it can be bent into shape fairly easily. And they are very, very hardy. They're pretty, uh, I would say one of the, uh, I don't know if tough as nails is really the right expression to use for any tree. Um, but it's, it's pretty tough and you can uh, push it quite far. So because of that it is often suggested as a novice or beginner's bonsai or, or species to use for, for, for those um, to, new to the art form of bonsai. But I think unfortunately this has resulted in a slight uh, somewhat of a stigma uh, that the tree the species is somehow inferior to the more sought after species today. Now in fun, funny enough in Japan, I although I've traveled to Japan uh, many times, you don't see this species which is in Japanese is sonare. Uh, it's not very commonly found but you do find specimens and they are generally when you do find them they're usually quite phenomenal. Uh, the species have generally had very very interesting and very developed trunks. I think this is as they are or were collected many years ago in Japan because of course they are indigenous to the country and uh, could be collected. But I think that the species is to some extent un uh, misunderstood. Fortunately they are, um, the information now is a bit more accessible. I think that we're only now beginning to see the possibilities uh, that the species really has to offer and I'm excited to see uh, what the future holds for it because now we have a number uh, obviously we don't have any Yamadori of them um, but there are some trees I'm, I'm sure circulating that must now be 30 40 odd or maybe even more uh, years old we could start seeing some really great uh, specimens of this species. Before. Before I start working on this tree, as with any other tree, if it's the first time that I'm going to start working on it, or if it's my first interaction with the tree, um, is that I want to take a good look at the tree and kind of uh, get an understanding of what its history might have involved, um, what techniques might have been used, general, general health of the tree, the condition of the foliage, the bark, uh, the soil, um, and just familiarize myself with the tree. I think that's quite important because uh, you need to understand um, what has been lacking and um, or what the problems are uh, so that you can look at remedying the situation. So the very first problem that I want to uh, highlight yeah, which is fairly typical of the species if it's not maintained properly is you can see how leggy that these some of the branches have become and this is as a result of the lack of maintenance quite simply because what you'll see with this species is that it does this clumping tremendous bushy foliage 
but what uh, then uh, results is that the sunlight is unable to penetrate um, into this, uh, this foliage and so the foliage becomes progressively weaker and eventually will, will die off. And I suspect that this is what has happened here. Um, and so we're going to have to look at uh, perhaps a combination of techniques uh, which will include reinvigorating the tree. That process should result in some back budding. It might be a lot faster if I just do some grafting on it. Of course, this, the, this is uh, not the right time of the year to, to do grafting, but I also wouldn't say that the foliage is, uh, that the tree is healthy enough um, to, to graft with um, in any way. That, the first priority will be to get the, the foliage or to get the tree uh, to a good state of health. Um, but this is, as I say, just one of the issues that um, is immediately uh, visible on, on this tree, is the very leggy branches. What is quite encouraging to see is uh, that there are some buds already on the tree. So maybe we can just look at strengthening those or develop, helping those to develop uh, stronger and uh, they might form part of the future structure of the tree. Just like many uh, junipers, the procumbens is no exception. You will often find this type of foliage growing at the base of existing branches. And um, these, uh, this growth is actually very important because it's with this growth that you can ensure the future, uh, so-called future proof the tree, because it's with this growth that you're going to replace the, the branches as they become too uh, coarse and too thick over time. And then you would revitalize the tree by using this young um, energetic growth. But most of the time during maintenance, you would be removing that foliage. Uh, so, as, so that it doesn't steal away energy from the branch that it is close to. Yeah, we can see this, some foliage, some examples of foliage that is on the interior of the tree um, that has uh, just essentially lost vigor and has died out or died back. Um, this is, uh, forms part of your typical maintenance to go back and just remove that to get rid of that. Um, and it also, it, it neatens it up, of course, and it will allow better light penetration into the canopy as well. Now, in my view, no juniper is complete without some dead wood or shari. Very often we would make gin, which is, uh, the difference of course is that this is a shari, this is along the trunk. Gin is on the ends of branches. Uh, or the whole branch, depending on which way you look at it. Now, in my opinion, this is very important for a juniper because it speaks uh, to the to the style um, of uh, you know, and also adds tremendous uh, value and weight to the story of the tree itself. And so, on this tree, we've got um, there aren't too many sharis, and there's no gin. It's easily created. Curing the gin is a different story, but um, in this case, we have some shari on the tree and I intend to increase that um, over time and uh, it usually is best to do that sort of incrementally so instead of taking a huge chunk or huge section of bark out of the, the trunk in one go you can do that in several smaller sections and then join them at a later stage. Uh, very often what I prefer to do is if there is a branch that needs to be eliminated that you would use or leave a stub of that, create gin with that and um, that it forms part of the line um, if you like, um, of, of the shari. So at this point in time, or today, I'm not going to be creating any deadwood uh, features uh, because I, I want to retain as much of the energy in the tree that the tree currently has to help it uh, cope with the repotting process. Another thing that I noticed on this tree is that there were some attempts to wire these branches. Of course, all of these, um, this tree typically grows in a horizontal uh, fashion. Uh, so this, the wire would have been applied to this tree at least uh, on several occasions. But I'm not sure when this wire was applied. 
Um, however, it was forgotten about. And as you can see now, it has really become embedded in the branch. Now, normally, uh, I would say just to uh, remove the wire is preferable. But in a case like this, I think uh, more is going to, the, there'll be a bigger problem with removing the wire because it is so embedded. In fact, it's calloused over. So you can just see glimpses of the wire. I think that in this particular case, it would just be better to leave the wire on because uh, especially at this time of the year, being that more than likely result in me stripping um, or ring barking this, uh, this branch and losing it. So I think I'll come back to this uh, at a later stage and decide what to do, uh, whether, and, and, and maybe this branch is going to be replaced anyway. And so if I, have, if I can make a choice, I would then remove, remove this, this branch in favor of keeping this one. But uh, it, it just, just depends. Obviously, that's very drastic. Um, and it would be, a, a, of course, a less drastic measure to just carefully remove this wire and uh, possibly create a shari uh, with that. Um, alternatively, just to cut it off. Um, of course, there will be some swelling um, on this section, but it's fairly thin wire. So I think the swelling will not be too severe. But as I said, I will just uh, come back to that at a later stage. It's nothing really that I can do about it now, except for pruning or cutting the wire, the excess wire that is uh, sticking out. But this is a extreme, rather extreme example of wire bite. And you, of course, never want to allow wire to bite into this point. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, today I'll be repotting this tree. And I think it's important to then therefore mention when uh, to repot the species and what signs to look out for. So generally it is around uh, this time of the year is a very good or the best time to repot them. And it is now early summer. So at the, at the moment it's November and late November and but more importantly um, aside from the date because I don't like referring to to dates um, because the weather patterns can change and of course it all depends on the tree and what the tree is doing so it's better to take a look at what the tree is doing and by reading the foliage I can see that this tree is starting to grow so now is a good time so you can see at the tips the tips are all green you can see some new foliage that's emerging and all of the tips are in this condition so I take that as my cue that it is a good time to repot it how do you decide when to repot a tree and when not to, or to abstain from repotting the tree. So this is a discussion or a question that has multiple answers to, the, to it, of course, as many things in bonsai. So the answer is not straightforward. So rather than get into a general discussion about it, uh, let me just um, highlight the reasons why I have decided to, before doing anything else with this tree, to repot it. I don't know, well I can see that this soil, uh, based on my previous experience um, with uh, this customer's trees, is that they are planted in a very organic sandy mix, uh, which is not the best mix for this species. In fact, I don't like that mix at all for any trees really, but, but I'm just mentioning that the, the health of this tree has uh, has a lot to do what, with what is happening in the root zone and I can assure you it's there's not much happening in the root zone but you'll see that when when we um, start when I start repotting it and removing that old growing media so for me um, this is the very first step in first getting the tree healthy uh, if you work on a tree that is weak you are going to or you must expect a weak response it's pretty obvious but uh, I don't think it's in practice, um, it's often overlooked, let's put it that way. And, um, but as I say, the, the, my goal at this point in time is uh, because I think this tree has an amazing future and I'm really excited to work on it um, in the coming years is to first get it healthy and the way to get it healthy is to change the root, uh, to change the soil, get it into something that is freer draining that will hold its structure and that I know is in a, a good sound condition, um, the, the media that I'm using, uh, that it hasn't broken down, it hasn't compacted, that there's no uh, bugs because obviously we can check when we are repotting 
the tree, we can check what's happening in the root zone, whether there are uh, any kind of aphids, mealybugs, or um, cutworms, or whatever, which is typical when, when you're using organic mediums. Um, so, and also obviously to just check if there's any root rot um, and eliminate that, get that out of the system. Um, but once I then have the, the tree in good media, I would expect that within two years that the health of this tree will improve dramatically. So in about, I'm not going to work on this tree after doing the repotting today. It will not be worked on for at least another two years. During that time, it will be very well fed and their goal will be to get this tree into a very healthy state that I can then go back into and start with the styling process, setting the structure first initially and then building onto that. Um, this tree must be at least 20 years old, uh, possibly older, um, quite possibly older. It's very difficult to guess at the age of trees uh, when I don't know the history of them, um, being that if a tree is not fed, obviously it's going to grow a lot slower than a tree that is very well fed, or if it's in a very fast draining medium, it's going to grow very much more aggressively than in something in a very fine growing medium. All of those factors play a role, but in just guessing at the age of this tree, it is an old tree. And so I think that spending a good number of years, five years, just to get the structure of the tree in place, is uh, is not um, you know you don't want to rush it you want you do want to take your time and I think that when you work with these trees in a, a, a very deliberate uh, I wouldn't say slow but just a deliberate calculated uh, process method um, that they reward you by remaining in a very healthy state. When you push them too far, they respond and they give you the very juvenile foliage once again. Um, it may dro drop branches in some places, and then you have to wait for the tree to recover again before you can continue working on them. Uh, so the first step in this whole entire process is to get the tree firstly into good medium, uh, growing medium, and uh, get so that the tree has a good starting point um, to on which uh, and a foundation for me on which to build uh, the rest the, the the next for the next five years ten years of this tree so for this customer i didn't really have too many options to offer them um, in the way of a ceramic container um, but i did find this one in my collection uh, that i think will work certainly for the moment until we find something better, um, but the customer is very happy with it, and I think it'll actually suit the style of the tree very nicely as well. It seems, to, I believe, it's an oldish uh, Chinese pot um, with uh, various scenes that have been uh, created, painted um, on on the on the various panels. So I'm not sure yet which which panel I'm going to be using as a front. I don't think it's too important at this particular stage um, because it might the front of the tree still needs to be determined um, but uh, obviously being a cascade you're going to be looking for or I was looking for a container that of course has the length which will allow the drooping branch or will accommodate the drooping branch. Talk about growing media as well I'm going to be using a combination of Akadama pumice and uh, some uh, agri-carb or uh, carbon, um, carbon particles and there is also some crushed stone in there as well. It's probably in a one to one to one ratio but I will be trying to use a coarser uh, grade of growing media near the base and then moving to a slightly smaller particle size um, in, in the in, in, in near the top of, of the container and that will just promote a bit better aeration of the uh, root system at, at, at the lower region of the container because of course this area is going to take a lot longer to dry out than in the areas of the top. But before you start to work on the, the root system or exposing the, the roots of the tree it's a good idea to get your pot and of course your soil ready uh, to get anything really ready that you're going to be needing in the process because once the roots of the trees is, are exposed 
you want to be working as quickly as possible and to get them covered again and keep them from drying out. So it's also a very good idea not to work in the sun, for instance, and to preferably work out of a spot where there's wind because the wind blowing over the roots is going to dry them out a lot faster, of course, as well. Now with this particular pot, there's no uh, wire uh, hol holes or additional holes for the wire to hold the tree in place or into the container, keep it nice and firm. Any movement, especially just after repotting the tree, may result in the new uh, roots that develop after the process. Uh, to, they're, they're extremely fragile and so any movement, however small it might be, may result in those roots either breaking and dying or otherwise they're just discouraged from developing. So first we're going to cut off a section of the stick uh, that will be long enough to cover uh, the drainage hole. So the, the ne there needs to be about a centimeter or so on either side uh, of the drainage hole um, and the, for the, um, the stick to sort of press and anchor onto on the ceramic container. So you've got a stick here and then you're going to take a length of aluminium wire and I'm going to, oh you don't have to use aluminium wire, you can use galvanized wire as well but um, I'm using aluminium and obviously you're just going to make sure that it is long enough, uh, the, the wire, that you can have two ends uh, the length of the, the container. And now I'm going to wrap this wire around the, um, the stick. Just, uh, let's see, two times. And so you end up with this, the stick with the wire running on both sides uh, or running, uh, running up. And now this is going to form a good strong anchor on which to hold the tree to prevent it from moving. Of course, yeah, you can see the stick and the wire, which we'll be using to tie the tree down with in place. And uh, this is going to be plenty strong enough to hold the tree to prevent it from moving. Subject, let's get started. And the first thing I'm going to do is just to cut this container uh, so that I can get it out. Uh, might be able to lift it out, but um, I think let's just cut it down and see how far we go. Already I find this gi gigantic grub in here, uh, which is very typical of uh, organic based growing mediums. And this uh, grub, if there's not enough organic medium or material for it to, to um, eat, it starts to eat the, the roots of the tree. So it's very possible that, uh, I, well, I'm sure that I'll find more of these, but it's also very possible that this is at least partially uh, the cause of the, the tree's health uh, or the condition that it's in at the moment. Yeah, we can see some healthy uh, roots. You can see this is, uh, this kind of indicates activity in the tree and uh, we would want to see a lot more of this. This is a healthy root and the, the black roots around it are uh, not very healthy roots. Now, what I, before I go any further with cleaning out this root ball, uh, there are several different techniques, I'm sure, to or approaches, strategies, if you like, to repotting a tree like this. Uh, but what I found is that Boone's technique of a 50-50 repot actually works extremely well, particularly when you're going from a tree that's in a certain type of growing media and changing it into something completely different. So what I'm going to be doing is uh, following that same approach, um, which is to essentially bare root uh, the one half of the tree. So typically the, the front half of the tree and, and leaving the back section of the, the root ball completely uh, unworked or untouched. And then um, you then obviously pot it up in the growing media that you want. And then two years later, you go back and you leave the front of the tree alone and you remove or bare root the back of the tree. 
and that works very well. It, it, it just sort of mitigates or limits the amount of shock that is, is experienced by the tree. It does take a little bit longer and obviously you have to go back in again and repot, uh, but uh, the result is far, uh, the, 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 the results far outweigh um, the, the, the time um, issue of, of, uh, of it. So what I'm using now is just a very blunted stick. This is actually a, a dowel stick um, that's been sharpened a little bit. And uh, this is the, probably one of the least uh, destructive ways of getting old media out of the soil. Obviously um, things like uh, root hooks and, and all that work very well too and very effective at combing the roots out uh, but they do tend to very frequently rip the, the roots as well. So just be careful when working with those, they're very useful though. Um, and then also another tip that I can share with you is that um, when you're going to, when you know you're going to be repotting a tree. Try not to water the tree for a couple of days before the time. Uh, this will allow the media to dry out a bit and uh, make it easier to remove it from um, the root ball. So as I mentioned, I'm uh, using Boone Manikipavits technique, if I pronounce that correctly. Sorry Boone, if I just uh, erect your surname. Um, apologies for that. But I'm using his technique here of uh, doing a half uh, bare root. So I'm going to be, I'm going to assume that this half of the tree is the front and I can use this, this line essentially. And then the back will be uh, this back section here. So I'll leave this section of root um, largely untouched, obviously just removing what I need to in order to get it into the container. And, uh, but the front will be uh, uh, bare rooted. So all the, the media, bare rooting is, uh, there's no washing involved, uh, but you're bare rooting the roots as in you're removing all the growing media from it. Now generally with conifers, this is not something that you would want to do too frequently. They don't like that. Uh, it's not a problem to do it with uh, deciduous trees, but um, conifers don't really like that. So uh, that's, I think, part of the reason why this technique of boons that he's developed um, works so effectively uh, is that it just reduces the amount of stress that is uh, placed on the tree. Um, but by but then allowing you to completely remove uh, the old growing medium as well and replacing it. So as I'm, I'm working in this uh, root ball, I can feel how compacted um, the roots are in this space. And obviously this is where the, 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 the tree probably lived in the previous container for many years. And um, you can see by the amount of roots uh, that, that it contains. Um, but, uh, it's a good thing now that we we're going in there and uh, opening it up because it had begun to uh, to compact and uh, so oxygen flow into the root so the zone has been impeded and that's not a healthy uh, situation for the tree to be in um, and also the process that uh, of repotting will revitalize the tree uh, obviously after it's recovered from the repotting process it's, it's itself uh, will allow it to, um, as, as it produces a proliferation of new roots and, and that uh, those roots obviously work far more efficiently and uh, are able to supply the tree with uh, much needed nutrients. So it uh, took quite a bit of effort because the root ball was quite compacted uh, probably after very many years of not being repotted properly. Um, so there was a lot of stones uh, that were between the roots, wedged between the roots, which I needed to get out. And um, But so I have now bare rooted the one half and the other half has remained untouched. And the next step will be to then put it, to now put it into the new container.
I finished uh, chopsticking the growing media, the new growing media in around the root ball. Uh, the tree is secured in place and I'm just quickly going to go through um, and remove the dead growth that I uh, showed you earlier on. I should have done that before I started with the repotting um, but it should only take a couple of seconds and then I can go and give the tree a good watering. And that about sums up the work for this tree at this point in time. If I can just uh, recap, this tree was uh, in a plastic tub and it was growing in a very sandy organic medium. There was a lot of grubs, in fact, uh, that I got out of it, uh, all, I don't know, maybe munching on the roots a little bit. Uh, but certainly uh, you don't want whatever they're doing in there in the container you don't want them there and uh, so I've just uh, changed the soil and as uh, as I showed you I only uh, disturbed or bare rooted one half of the root ball um, which is a Boone I believe it's Boone's technique um, I'm not sure if anybody else was doing it but if I can give him credit because that's at least where I learned it from and um, that helps the tree to uh, transition from that old growing medium into the new Akadama Pamasilava uh, mix that I used. Um, it also just ensures that the tree has uh, roots that are uh, totally undisturbed, um, that if you know that it has reserves, that it has um, the ability to take up nutrients and moisture uh, while it's pushing out new roots in the bare rooted area. And then the idea will be that in two years time I will go back uh, to this tree and uh, uproot it again and then open up and uh, remove the back side of the tree, that section uh, of, the, of the root ball to clean the old uh, growing media out of that. And then I should find that the front side has been uh, uh, filled with new roots. Um, so don't pay too much attention to the styling of the tree, the front of the tree. I mean, I've, I've placed it in the new container in, at the angle that I believe will most likely be the front. Um, but that may change um, and uh, the idea now is to get the tree as strong as possible, uh, fertilize it for the next two years and um, not do really anything else with it. Uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps if it's strong enough I might be able to start pruning back to more juvenile, stronger, uh, vigorous growth um, and, and get away from the, the legginess uh, that is there but I'm not sure how the tree will respond. Um, but worst case scenario is that in two years time we, I can then start considering uh, using some of this growth to graft onto the interior of the tree. That might be a quicker way of, um, of restyling this tree. Moving it into a partial sun uh, position uh, or shade, very bright shade location. Uh, protected from the wind and uh, it'll stay in that location probably for the next four weeks. Uh, the next month and during that time period we'll just use uh, something like a kelp pack which is a seaweed extract it has auxins and cytokinins in it um, that is useful for the tree to to uh, uh, recover from the stress and uh, stimulates it into uh, growing once again that'll come after the, the, the month when the tree has now um, uh, settled in and it is showing signs of growth. When it's showing signs of that new growth we can then support that growth with fertilizer and then it sort of snowballs from there and just gets stronger. After that first month period it will be moved into more sun uh, maybe for the next two or for the first two three weeks after that it'll be placed into partial sun but ultimately it needs to be placed into full sun. So the goal is to have it in full sun as fast as possible um, but uh, obviously the transpiration through the foliage will exceed what the roots are able to take up at this stage. So we just need to make sure that the tree uh, settles in first is, and, and then when we see active signs of growth to, that it can be used as a, a, sim, a signal that the tree is fine and we can push it into more sun. So the more sun we get onto the foliage the better it will be able to photosynthesize 
and the stronger it will become. So the foliage, are, um, the juniper foliage is where the strength is sitting and uh, that's why you'll often find for instance a cutting if you do a cutting of these trees or any junipers. Um, you'll think, hey, I'm, I'm being, I've been successful with rooting it because the cutting will stay green for a few months, uh, up to six months, I think, if, I've, if my observations are correct. Um, and that is just because the foliage is actually able to um, remain in that state for such a long time without desiccating, drying out. Um, because it doesn't really lose moisture that easily through the, through the foliage. So after that, after that first month, we need to start moving it into, into more sun. Um, and, and, and that will just continue to accelerate the process of uh, becoming vigorous once again. Uh, so I hope that you've enjoyed this uh, tutorial, this workshop, this makeover, um, and obviously see that the best way is not necessarily to do to try and do everything at once. In other words, repotting, restyling, um, all of that, all of those operations all in one sitting is not necessarily the best thing to do with your tree. Just because you can, and perhaps because this species is particularly resilient, it can actually uh, recover from that. Uh, but I prefer to work with the trees in a more systematic, systematic uh, uh, sort of strategic phased approach uh, where you don't set the tree back too badly um, and that it can, uh, uh, because also when you do that, uh, you do lay the tree uh, uh, prone or susceptible to attack from insects. Um, because it's just weakened. Uh, so things like sp spider mite particularly is a problem in our summer because it's very dry um, and hot and they like those sort of conditions. So you want your trees as strong as possible because that is the best defense. Um, uh, you, you know, obviously pesticides uh, is, is a good preventative, um, but the best defense is a, is a strong healthy tree of course. So anyway, as I say, um, I hope you've enjoyed uh, today's session and um, this will be probably a part one and maybe in a year or two's time I'll go back to this tree so it's a bit of a wait um, but um, I, I'm excited as I said earlier about the future of this tree and I hope that um, you have subscribed and liked my channel and uh, then when I do upload the next one or but I'll obviously be uploading more videos sooner than that um, that you'll be notified. But thanks very much for watching. I do appreciate, uh, appreciate it and I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much and until next time, goodbye.